Have you ever bought a board game where your spouse said no? Have you ever won a game on an insane dice roll? Have you ever killed a dragon using only chopsticks? Do you text your friends to distract them from your current moves? Can you finish off a pizza in between your second and third turn? Can you ride a panda across the plains of Doo Dee Dewey? Do you have what it takes to stop an evil wizard from destroying your village? Do you tell your friends to call you Dungeon Master? Can you muster the strength to play one more game after 2 a.m.? Can you be the chosen one all the way up to bedtime? Have you ever dared to say no and pick your best friend's favorite character anyway? Have you ever randomly shouted nonsense because you thought it would be funny and it wasn't? Well, we haven't done most of those things either, but we are willing to try. Join us as we explore the world of board gaming and all the crazy things that come with it. Welcome to the Epic Gaming Night Podcast. Welcome to the Epic Gaming Night Podcast, a podcast about Thank tabletop you. games, but mostly <laughs> board games. Um, with I'm your host, Roy Kennedy. With me tonight is Matt. Hello. And Rob. Hello, hello. How's it going, guys? It's going good. It's going good. Nice. How are, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good. Not not tired at all from any uh, crazy long weekends or anything like that. Pretty uh, pretty boring weekend, huh? Yeah, yeah. I was trying to like uh, make sure to like take a nap and get all rested up, but then I was like, I gotta prepare things for the podcast and get this computer working. So <laughs> so yes. so work should be fun. Yes, yes. Awesome, guys. Yeah. Well, we just got back from Gen Con, and today's topic... Oh, oh my gosh, Gen Con! And today's topic is going to be like our Gen Con uh, recap, or post-Gen Con show. Um, but first, we're going to talk about the things that we've been playing. Um, so, who wants to start? Uh, I'll go first. So, um, I pre-ordered Ashes, finally got Ashes in. I was really excited I got it in before Gen Con, but I, I was able to play it. Uh, at Gen Con, Ashes is it's called it's by Plat Hat Games. It's Ashes: Rise of the Phoenix Born, and the background and idea behind Ashes. You got a copy? This is Trevor's copy. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> um, that's why it's still in shrink. If it was my copy, it would not be in shrink. <laughs> Ashes: Rise of the Phoenix Born. There was a great war back in the day, and um, all of these people had. Uh, phoenixes in them and what happened is these warriors throughout time have died and generations have gone on but now there's these people with little pieces of the phoenix born still inside them and so it's kind of like highlander meets magic the gathering where you have to destroy the other phoenix born because you want to absorb their ashes so you can become the full utmost phoenix born and so you have to destroy everybody it's a um, playing card game you know it's um, Phoenix Born versus Phoenix Born. It actually plays up to four players. I only played it two players while we were there. Lots of crazy uh, schematics. The artwork is absolutely beautiful. Um, the play, I really like the dice. This is a game where you roll dice to see the types of things that you can uh, cast and the different things that you can do each round. I really, really enjoyed how they implemented dice into the game as well. It was a lot of fun. Um... What I also like about this game is like your very first hand, you get to custom build your very first hand. So it's not like you're going to get, you know, a bad draw starting off the game. That may happen to you later on in the game, but when you start off, you get to build um, your hand and how you want to start off. And so I thought that was a lot of fun. And uh, of course, the dice can always be great to you or it can always be horrible to you. Um, but a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. This is going to be a game that I'm probably going to keep up with any expansions and anything that uh, comes out like that. I uh, highly recommend it. Uh, Ashes, Rise of the Phoenix Born by Plat Hat Games. Yeah, I, I thought the game was really awesome. Uh, me and you demoed it and um, played the two different characters. I don't know the names of all the characters yet, but I was playing one that was like very much like a little bit more controlly, but could like ping the characters off. And you were playing yes. one that got like big characters out and stuff like that. But it's kind of interesting the way the turn works because like you you start the game with your five starting hand 
and then you basically start a round and basically you just go back and forth and you have like a main action and then like a, a secondary action you can do one of each of those and after you yep. do that which is like very little stuff it'll be like play one card and maybe play like a little ability on a card and then they get to go and then you don't like draw any cards as these turns go back and forth until like everyone is done playing stuff and used all their resources so like until you're pretty much out of dice and cards yeah because you get like tons of dice to roll so you have tons of resources and you got to try to figure out how to like manage those resources best so like yeah everybody you gets use back five and forth. or 12 dice yeah, yeah yeah and you just go back and forth and back and forth i think it's is it like five for each type so, so yeah it's, it's like five 10. so you get 10 dice yeah, yeah. yeah. so you get okay. 10 dice. i didn't i couldn't remember if it was five or six and and some spells might cost six dice to play, but a lot of spells only cost like one or two to play. So you can play all sorts yeah. of different cards and do all sorts of different things. But uh, most of the creatures in this game are like summoned from like your little enchantment spell books that are on your spell board. Yep. So it's pretty cool because there's lots of tokens and lots of unique things for all the different characters. But uh, the thing that I liked is I would like slow roll my turn like every single time so i'd like wait until my opponent ran out of resources and then i'd be like and now i do this do you pass and now i do this do you pass and now i do this do you pass so they couldn't see exactly what was happening um and i just be able to throw a bunch of creatures down and do a bunch of attacks after they've pretty much exhausted everything they already have um that was pretty fun um it was a blast it was definitely a big blast yeah, yeah and but that, how about you guys what have you been playing awesome um so i'll go ahead and talk about a game that i played um i played a game called code names from vlada shavadal it's a it looks like a straight up just word game because it's got a whole bunch of just words out on the board you've got a five by five grid of like all these simpleish sort of words um but it's more of a deduction game than even a word game because um basically you split into teams um you can play this game with almost however many players you want but uh, there'll be one spy master for each each team. You have a blue team and a red team. And the spy master has a card that shows which of those words are your team's cards. So I think you have like like six six words that are your team's. And then um, there's one word that's like the assassin. So if anybody ever guesses that word, then um, they automat their team automatically loses the game. And the way the game is really unique is you have to look at these words and try to figure out a way to help your team guess multiples of your words without guessing um, any of your opponents or guessing the assassin one. And there's also like neutral words. I know it sounds crazy because I'm saying words a whole lot, but the game is actually really fun. I don't like word games at all like Scrabble or any of that stuff. But this no, it game... wasn't that. My wife just texted me. She said, don't eat ice cream. It looks bad. So I was just... <laughs> nice. Um, but yes, yeah. ma'am. What was I going to say? Basically, the way it works is you'll be like, say you have several different like things that you have like a nurse that's part of your word and then like a pirate that's part of your word and there's no other things that are like really people. You could say like people too. Um, that happened in a situation with me. Um, where there were several people that were all my color, but then there was also the scientist that was the assassin. So it's like, I can't say that specific word. I'm going to have to figure out a different way to try to get people to do that. And the amount of word, you say a word, and then the amount of words you say that are related to it, and then people try to guess. So it's very meta, sort of like how you get to that. There were all sorts of interesting situations where people would like say like three things relate to this word and you're trying to like figure out what their mindset was when they were thinking that it's a lot of fun it's how would you compare how would you compare compared to spyfall um they're complete like for like group but i mean like group party game atmosphere how would you compare it that way not mechanics but like group wise i think it's pretty good there's no like hidden trader so you automatically know like which side is which um it kind of has like a similar theme i guess this has words so whatever the theme is but um and the other one it's like the spies in a location but he doesn't even know what that location is that doesn't even make any sense either um yeah. <laughs> but as He's far as as far as they people. go i think i think a lot more people will be open to playing code names just because really because like you have you're, the whole team works together so it's like you have a bunch of people just discussing whether or not this word is the word that the codemaster actually meant um, so you're like 
arguing back and forth whether or not um, uh, when they said round if button was actually if he actually saw a button or if if uh, like wheel is better or maybe he meant both of those but there's also whole like is whole the round word like which is more of a round word which makes more sense so it's really it's really interesting it's kind of one of those games you have to play to see how it works but it's been getting rave reviews and it's probably I think like one of the the biggest games out of Gen Con so and they all sold out so quick (laughs) but yeah Matthew yeah did you play anything while we were gone? Just video games. Nice. What Which video one? games did you play? Uh, started playing Rocket League, a game where you're a car and you're playing soccer against other cars. <laughs> nice. It's a ton of fun. The controls yeah. are really tight. It's nice. Uh, and I started playing Dota 2 again because the international is going on and uh, the prize pool is $18 million, And so it's like... Mm-hmm. You're like, I wish I could win $18 million for playing a video game. Man, if only I were good or wanted to take the time to get good. If only you were from Korea. (laughs) South Korea, yeah. Actually, uh, there's only one team that's in it right now that's South Korean, and they're in the loser's bracket. Nice. dominated primarily by uh, American and Chinese teams. Currently. So so is is Dota 2 still big in South Korea, or are they just... uh, weren't well, on the top of their game. It's just that it never really picked up the same way like StarCraft or right. a lot of the other esports. Or League of Legends. League of yeah. Legends is huge right now. And that's yeah. the thing. And Le- League of Legends has this uh, wonderful philosophy where they're like, hey, um, let's try to suppress everything else that's not League of Legends. Gotcha. Um, at like events and stuff like that. Um, but it's slowly starting to catch on. The South Korean team that's here this year has done a lot of work and tried to get like more of that stuff spread out so i don't know it should be interesting to see what happens but a lot of a lot of upsets so far pretty cool awesome yeah video well, games I'll, yeah um while we were at gen con i got to demo a game that i purchased a while ago um i got to demo forbidden stars and this game i'm definitely going to fall in love with um it is a complete objective control kill your opponent get out of my face type of like we can have a truce for a turn but next turn i'm gonna have to kill you type of a game it's in the warhammer universe the board is absolutely amazing the components every faction has got detailed ships that meet their faction it's not like all the ships look the same um it's got the space marines chaos marines the orcs and then the um uh, the uh, who are the the Eldar? Is it the Eldar? And then it's got the Eldar. And what's great about this game is when you play with it plays up to four players. One of your objectives is in one of the other players' base or right around their base. So it's not like it's not like they're all in the middle. They the game literally makes you go after the other person's base yep. to be able to claim your objective. The way you win the game is you. Uh, collect all four of your objectives. As soon as you collect all four of them, you win the game. Um, but they have like these little force field, like like uh, like uh, like storms, like ionic storms that are going through the map, and you can't really travel through them unless you have a certain technology that lets you travel through them. And, and so, then you can only do it once per turn. So. Yes, but what's great about the force fields, in which I didn't I I didn't like while we were playing, but I totally see the amazing value of it is at the end of every turn you get these cards and the cards tell you a way you have to move the force now you have to move the storm now once one storm has been moved it cannot be moved again and you flip it over and you have to move your storm you can't just say well I'm not gonna move my storm no you have to follow the pattern on the card that you get and the reason why I say that is I was the orcs and directly to my right were the space marines and right in between us was like this this big storm. And I was like, great, he's never going to be able to climb over my area. So I'm just going to totally go left and I'm going to go uh, for the Eldar. Well, the end of the round happened. And then the, the guy at Fantasy Fight, the demo, was like, oh, hey, by the way, now everyone moves their storms. And I'm like, this would really be horrible if we were playing a normal game because <laughs> my base and everything was left wide open. And all of my army went to the left. And so... um. I like that idea. I'm glad we didn't finish the game just because I would have been wrecked. <laughs> I kind of feel the same um, way. 
But uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, I'm really, really excited. And it's a big epic game where you're just destroying each other. And I really like games like that. Um, as you can tell, I'm a big Risk fan. And so this is really going to you know, fill a void for me where it's not Twilight Imperium, um, but it, it still has that epic spaceness, but it's different. It's not like, Twilight Imperium 3, like but it, 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 it's like the war of Twilight Imperium 3. Like, if you could do the battles, that's what this game is. Because you have the foot soldiers, um, and then you have the spaceships, and um, man, it just it seemed like a lot of fun. And so I'm really excited to get this back to the table. I, I That's think Forbidden it's, Stars. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Um, the the uh the action placement in the game is with these like little tokens and you have several different types of actions but um you can only place like four of them a turn and the way you place them um people can place theirs on top of you and then you can't do yours until they actually do it so you can kind of see which sectors people are trying to do stuff in um so you can try to try to figure out what they're doing and you can yeah. place to co tokens down for your actions to try to like mess that up so like i was trying to in the demo like get it so i could get two points during the demo because i'm like if i get two points and four points wins you the whole game i could be pretty set up so i got almost all the way there until the guy to the right of me decided to put his token on one of my things and i'm like well i guess that's not really going to happen because he moved a whole bunch of troops in to stop me but um, because yeah. I was hoping he was gonna think I couldn't get through the ionic storm and stuff like that, but I set it up so like the first turn of all the technology to get through the ionic storm, the second turn I uh, was going to like go over there and get it, and then the third turn I was gonna go over there and um, attack Rob and get planets off of his. But since he placed his thing on top of there, I wasn't able. You just to... went straight for Rob. I I was like I was like <laughs> well I can't get over there to get the stuff that I need um because he's got his thing on there like I can't even take that action. So yeah. I guess I'll just move every single unit I have on the board to Rob's planet. <laughs> so I was like, we're going to figure right. out how combat I had a works. Little planet. I was like, I had a little planet right in the middle of the board with two little infantry guys. Was, However, the that orcs, was the, their infantry is pretty strong. Though. Right. That was the only combat during the entire demo, right? Yeah, it really was. So I was like, really if, if there's going to be one combat during the demo, I want to make sure I win it. So I just put every and, single unit yeah. right there. It was a Make terrible sure idea. My it was a terrible yeah. idea because after looking back, you're only allowed to have a certain number of units on a planet. So like once uh -huh. the battle was over, like, all, like, like I lost like half of my guys. Not because yeah. they died in battle. They all lived in battle. They did great in battle. Whoa, 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 whoa. I killed a couple guys in battle. You 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 I made over one, one. That's fall right. over. That's right. So you halfway killed the one. The mechanics, <laughs> if you've ever played Game of Thrones, the board game, um, it's it's a lot like that in the uh, in the little chips on Game of Thrones, the board game. You put your chips on your places upside down, tells where you move. But also, if you are ever in a battle in Game of Thrones and a unit of yours uh, loses in battle, but it's not necessarily destroyed, you put it on its side, and uh -huh. if it's engaged again, then it dies. But you know, it has a chance to survive if it doesn't get engaged again that round. And it's so also, it's it, it also really, kind of like it's the, like Fallout uh... Imperium meets Game of Thrones meets. Yeah. Risk meets, which those are like three of my top five games. It's so amazing. Exactly. So it's like it fits right in there with like the games you like. It's yes. What do you think about uh, what you've heard about Forbidden Stars? I know you said you wanted us to send you pictures of it, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it definitely sounds interesting. I mean, but I've, I've always thought it sounded interesting. So yeah, I, I was it trying. Sounds to, it sounds. It looks. Like, it, like, it, let's it plays let's play. that way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. It really is, and the artwork is great, and everything is a lot of fun. And the mechanics—it's um, it's not that complicated, but there's definitely some strategy to it, especially with your tokens, because you have to put them down in reverse order. So, like your first move, you're playing last, hmm. you know. And so, um, so it is kind of crazy like that, but it's so much fun, so much fun. That's one that we will play soon. Yeah, there's uh there's like a little bit of deck building in there too cuz you have your little combat deck and you can buy upgrade cards to put into your combat deck and remove cards that are not necessarily as good. So there's all sorts of like awesome like resource management mechanics and upgrading your your stuff mechanics which are the stuff that I love from games like Twilight Imperium and Eclipse and stuff like that. Now Roy definitely beat me on that one, but there's another one we'll talk about later that I got my revenge on <laughs> nice. that I'm very excited about. And so um I'll let somebody else go, but it was a fun game. I recommend it. 
Cool. Um, I guess I'm going to talk about one more game, which is uh, Champions of Midgard. Have you heard of this one, Rob? Um, I heard Trevor talking about it some, um, but I, I really haven't looked into it. It's cool. more of like a Euro-style game, right? It's it's interesting. So it's it, like worker it, placement? It is a worker placement game, but it's basically like Lords of Waterdeep if it was like turned up to 11 and like awesome. Because <laughs> you have worker placement where you're going around placing the workers just like Lords of Waterdeep or something along those lines, but it's very thematic with this like Viking warrior theme with where you have like different like fantasy-ish characters um, that can do different things to better recruit people or get victory points when they win in combats. But the, the thing about this is you're recruiting these warrior dice to send out on combats and then you like actually like go to fight monsters. So there's places where you can place your workers to fight the monsters and you actually roll your worker dice to actually like have a combat. So it feels a lot more like a thematic game where you're rolling dice trying to beat monsters added yeah. into this Euro style game. I thought it was a ton of fun. It's probably the best worker placement that I've played, like being a super thematic person and not all about yeah. the the Euro style games. Like this was amazing for me. Um, cause it was a lot of fun. It was a hot game at Gen Con. Like it didn't last long at all at Gen Con. Yeah. There's stuff I know like a lot of people were looking for it. There's stuff like you got to go to like this place to like get your food so that you can go over to the boats and you have to send your Vikings like on a journey to go like fight these giant epic monsters to get tons of points. Um, so it's like you, when you're on the journey, there's a card that can flip. And if you don't have enough food or Vikings, they can kill off some of them and stuff like that. So you're like preparing for the journey and then you're going. And then like you have this epic battle. If your guys that survive the journey, you just roll dice to try to kill off the guys. And there's things that can give you re-rolls and stuff like that. It And lots of like um, different like runes and things like that that can give you special powers. But it still has the very um, Euro thing of like having to go around the board and get victory points and stuff like that. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, and if anybody's into Lords of Waterdeep, this is like a much better version of that. So, good times. Sweet. Any thoughts on that one, Matt? Sounds fun. <laughs> Vikings wow. are always good, man. Yeah. Vikings are always good. Does it good. like, does it get into like any of the like lore of like oh god i can't think of the word it's very uh, like but like oh well, yeah like viking mythology where it's like you have like idrasil the tree of life and like all these other things this doesn't really have as much of that another game we're going to talk about later has more of that um okay but this it's game like, this game is more of... like i don't think it's just straight vikings i think it's just more like like viking ish fantasy so like you have like trolls that are attacking the city like every single turn and if, okay. if someone doesn't beat the trolls, everybody gets these tokens that'll give them ne negative victory points. Um, and if you go to fight the troll and you beat it, you can get rid of those negative victory point tokens and give it to somebody else. So you can fight <laughs> off trolls, which is really fun. I just fought off trolls like the whole game and just kept piling tokens on Trevor. So he's like, I have to take the first <laughs> player token so I can fight the troll just so Roy will stop giving me these tokens. And I'm like, I'm yeah. the troll slayer. Um... But uh, there's also, like, these um, Duragar that you have to fight off, which are, like, the, the zombie, like, white walker undead guys. They're cool. And then the uh, the monsters that you fight in the journey are, like, all sorts of different things, like hydras and all sorts of craziness. But uh, I really like the game a lot, so I definitely highly recommend it. And it was another, like, sold-out hot game at Gen Con. It was one of those games where if you had it in your bag, people were like, hey, is that, uh, is that Champions of Midgard? Can, uh, can I, uh, you, yeah. do you actually want that? Are you selling that? <laughs> so, right? <laughs> one of those type of games. Awesome. Nice. So I guess we'll go ahead and get into our topic today, which is Gen Con Recap. So, what? Uh, me and Rob got to it go was to amazing. Gen Con, and we got to... <clears throat> ride in the car for like forever which was crazy but <laughs> we, we didn't die i was gonna say we we, was we so left tired. to go to gen con at what time like 9 30 p.m it was yeah we got to your house a little after nine um and after everyone went to the bathroom did all they did we were on the road by like yeah 9 30 and uh we drove all the way through the night to basically get to gen con just a little bit before the doors open. We got to Gen we got Con to there a little actually, while before the doors like open. Right at six a.m. And um, what's crazy is we were not the first people there, um, but I just remember being like so tired. I was so exhausted, but uh, it was a lot of fun. 
<laughs> we listened to podcasts on the way down. We made jokes. Um, we went on like a 2 a.m. McDonald's run just because we were all hungry and tired <laughs> and there was a McDonald's open. Got to get them McDoubles, and, uh, man. Bro, and he still owes me a favor. He cashed in on one of the McDoubles uh, this weekend. Um, but I, I bought my buddy Steven, who came with us, a couple of McDoubles. Um, and I was like, this is an investment. When we play a game and I need you to do me a favor, I'm just going to say McDouble. And, and you know so, what to do. Uh, right? I'm like, you owe me two McDoubles, all right? So I get two favors. And it totally worked to my favor. And I, I used one of them this weekend, um, and it was a lot of fun. And it was, it was great because it just brought back memories because immediately he did something, and I was like, McDouble. And he knew exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> and so uh, it was a lot of fun. But we didn't die. And then we got down there and we started playing Game of Thrones Love Letter, which I never played before. And I ended up buying a Love Letter now. And then um, Lost Legacy, which I ended up buying one of those as well. And it's just. Which uh, Game I mean, of Thrones, Game of Thrones we're Love gonna Letter. We're going to get into Gen Con. Game of Thrones is Love not Letter out. isn't actually a thing, it's like a printed thing. They've got so many different themes on Love Letter. They've got like the regular version, the Japanese version, and the Adventure Time version, all this other crazy stuff. But uh, I printed out my own version, which was Game of Thrones, because you know they need more different types. Yeah, of Yeah, not to make, not to get too sappy or anything like that. Like I've been to Gen Con before, you know, <laughs> I've been before. Um, but like I really enjoyed hanging out with friends and meeting new people and, and making new friends. Um, I would say before we get into some of the details, like getting to know people and like Brandon who was on our podcast last week uh, him and his wife Samantha she is so sweet uh, uh -huh. they bought me a coffee because I was like falling asleep and uh, she dropped her coffee in the trash can but she still gave me mine I would have been like uh, -uh I'm keeping that coffee but super <laughs> sweet people they are a lot of fun we had a great time hanging out with them um, and making friends and then uh, of course uh, Trevor and JJ and Brandon and just little things there's just it was a great time in and getting to know Roy on a more intimate level. That's uh, beautiful. That's slightly I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> you had fun. At least we slept in separate beds. <laughs> yes. Um, so I guess that leads into our first question. What was the best part of Gen Con? The people. And can I go – can I – can I – or do you want to go into what I mean by the people? Because we experienced something – that I don't think we ever dreamed of experiencing at this first Gen Con. Yeah. Do you want to tell that? I mean, you're you're probably just gonna fanboy all over the place all the time, so I'll just I'll just let you have your moment, man. <laughs> okay, listen. So we are at the Plaid Hat booth, and um, I'm buying some some games and stuff like that. And we're actually now at that time we were standing around. We're getting ready to demo Ashes, and um, Emerson, and I'm not gonna try to pronounce his last name. Uh, but Emerson uh, is in the NASCA booth, and NASCA booth is right directly uh, next door to us. Now, I know Emerson because he's the creator of Spectre Ops. NASCA Games partnered with Plaid Hat Games to help distribute the game. And so, you know, Emerson's there, and I, I waved at him and uh, went over and said hi and told him I really appreciated him. And uh, he did a great job, really loved the game, and glad him and Plaid Hat were able to work it out and love the product. And so... He was like, thank you so much. I got my awkward picture, which I did that a lot with people. I was like, hey, do you mind if I get an awkward picture with you? And I actually said those words. And, I mean, I got a lot of pictures. It was a lot of fun. And so I said my goodbyes, and uh, we went back over, and uh, we're hanging out in the Plaid Hat booth. And I'll let Roy talk about what happened at the Plaid Hat booth. But so we're over there, and all of a sudden, Emerson comes walking back over to us, and he's like, hold on. I recognize you guys from somewhere. <laughs> you guys do that podcast. <laughs> I watch you guys on Twitch. And like immediately, I'm not even lie. Both my nipples got so hard. My <laughs> what was the world? And everything was like that's a little bit so descriptive. Amazing. Oh god! Like, like this was so <laughs> ridiculous because never in my wildest dreams did I ever think of you know like a fan or whatever oh. meeting us at this first. But not even just a fan, like an amazing creator an amazing game designer actually recognized us from our show and stuff like that and so like i could have 
I could have gone home from Gen Con right then and been completely happy. Like, I was on Cloud9 the rest of the weekend. It absolutely blew my mind. And he's such a cool guy, and, and, and he really does listen because he was talking about things that we talked about in prior shows and then, you know, just a couple recent shows ago. And so, you know, it wasn't like he just caught us yeah, I know, was, on one show. I was and, like, and we were able to talk to him. And uh, I, had I think he's going to be a guest on our show, uh, hopefully in the near future. Yeah, I had posted like so, a picture that we fun. had played it overnight. And he's like, oh, Rob finally opened his copy and you got to play the game. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> yes. he actually listened to the podcast. What? That's awesome. So. Oh, and – not that anybody watching Twitch right now is going to know this, but to know that we're not making this up, our friend Trevor was standing right beside us talking to us when all of this goes down. <laughs> and so, like, all of this happens, and immediately he kind of looks at us like, oh, my gosh, this just kind of made their day. And he just, like, slowly <laughs> walked away. <laughs> Trevor's like, I got to. He didn't gotta. need to walk away or anything like that. But it was, it was just really cool because – you know, if I were to come back later and I said, Roy Emerson stopped me and he was like, he's a fan of our show, it probably wouldn't have been that believable just because, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm exciting anyway. You know, I, I can exaggerate, blow up situations. I can exaggerate a little bit. Um, but the fact that it happened to Roy and myself and we had a third party there um, just made it so cool. And I'm really excited to have him on the show and, and talk to him and and we are a big fan of his game. We played it there that weekend, and I got him to sign my copy. So now I have all of the Plat Hat guys and Emerson signed copy. And so it's uh, just that. That's probably the first thing I'll go over, but that was one of the best things that happened. You know, it was just people. Just people, man. It was just so cool. And the community, the board game community is just so cool. It was just a lot of fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed, like, meeting a bunch of these people because, I mean – me and Rob listen to like a bunch of different board game podcasts and like watch YouTube videos and all that stuff. So I know like a bunch of these people from online that uh, they don't necessarily know me as much, but like I'm like, oh man, I like all your stuff and the things you do and stuff like that. But being able to talk to a lot of people like these different designers and publishers um, was really cool. Being able to talk to Sam Healy about Twilight Imperium just for a second because everybody's so busy at Gen Con. That's why I'd, I'd really like to go to a, a convention that um, is a little bit smaller but still has like a lot of the same people at it. Cause then maybe I'd have more Orgies. chance. I'd have more of a chance to like have conversations and like n- not everybody's so rushed, but uh, it was still awesome to just be able to say, Hey man, we like your stuff. And uh, Rob's like, Hey, take a picture. <laughs> but uh, it was a ton of fun. I was, man. I got a lot of awkward pictures. Um, Eric Lane was probably my favorite awkward picture just because it really was awkward. He was in the middle of demoing a game and I just kind of interrupted everything. Terrible so, person. Um, we just lost Matt. Matt's back. Mm-hmm. So, you're on my screen. Your screen just like went out real quick. No. But um, do you want to add anything to that, Roy? I thought it was funny because I posted that picture that you sent me of Eric Lang, and uh, his hair is always so crazy. And someone was yeah. like, "Eric Lang looks like he's on fire." I'm like, "Dude, man, have you seen that guy's games? That designer is on fire, man. His stuff's amazing." He is, <laughs> oh my goodness! Every single game he's made that I have played is just blowing my mind. And I know we're gonna get into Blood Rage. But my package can't get here soon enough. Like, yeah, yeah. so talented, so talented. Um, so I, I think him and Vlad Shavadal are just on another level from everybody else. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. So, how about you, Roy? I, that was my same thing. Like, just meeting all the people um, was a, a great time. Well, what about Isaac? Yeah, I hung out with Isaac. Uh, I didn't hang out. We we got to meet Isaac and everything. That was a whole lot of fun. No, we no, no. You guys are now best friends. Oh, we're best friends. Okay, he yes. did hug me twice on two sep- like once on two diff- separate occasions. So I'm pretty sure that yes. makes makes us best friends, right? Um, but I yeah, didn't it was see really him cool. multiple people. Yeah, but um, I was excited. Um, I got to talk to him a little bit about his game Ashes, um, and we got to demo it and stuff. So that was a whole lot of fun. Um, and it was just cool because like he actually recognized us, so that was a lot of fun. And he told yeah. us to make sure we keep up with the podcast and keep doing what we're doing. So that was very encouraging, and it was a whole lot of fun. Like the the best thing about like meeting all these different publishers and designers is like everybody's just like so nice. I mean, you can tell like they're all like busy and like Gen Con. This is their like Black Friday, but when when they take a second to like talk to you, like. Um, you can tell like they actually care about the conversation they're having. They're not just trying to rush you off or anything like that. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, we also talked to uh, Christian Peterson um, after the in-flight report, and that was amazing yes. also. Um, and uh, I was like, hey, man, uh, I know a couple years ago you said uh, as long as you're the CEO of Fantasy Flight, there's always going to be something coming out for Twilight Imperium. And he said, well, I'm still the CEO, aren't I? <laughs> 
<laughs> so that was that was a lot. Yeah, he's of fun. very secretive. They're like very secretive over there at Fantasy Flight, but uh, I was I was pretty stoked because I was like, man, I just want to shake the hand of the man that made uh, Twilight Imperium because that's my favorite board game. Right. But uh, yeah, we had we had a ton of fun meeting people. Oh yeah. And yeah. Then, um, bro, Matt, it really was ridiculous, <laughs> and everyone really is so nice. Like we even meet. Uh, I got to meet Mark Steed from the Board Game Corner. Um, they're part of the Dice Tower Network. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember his buddy's name. Uh, they two very sweet guys, very nice guys, but just you know. Because I do appreciate these guys. I mean, it's part of the reason why we're doing our podcast is like these guys are really cool. They do a great job, and they, you know, I see what they do, and I want to be a part of that. And um, just a lot of fun. And, and guy was like, "Hey, man, you know what? Thank you so much. Dude just handed me like a, a, a dice tower, and if you MSRP those things, they're like twenty bucks." Yeah. Um, and so I got this like really nice wooden dice tower um, from him, and it was just um, him and everybody at the dice tower. Eric Lang was really cool. Uh, we took some goofy pictures together. I don't know if I posted all those, but we took some with funny faces. And then Sam, he was a he was a lot of fun. But um, just everybody. And again, back to to Brandon. Which Brandon, if you're watching this, I ordered two more shirts, and I haven't got my confirmation email yet about. The <laughs> I don't know if this is the uh, customer support line, of the podcast. Oh, okay. You know, Twitch. Okay. Um. I did get an email back because uh, we were joking on last podcast about sending uh, him some uh, napkin drawings of T-shirts. And uh, mine were worse than napkin drawings of T-shirts. And he responded back like, wow, these are great ideas. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally I deleted your email. Yeah. Oh. Oh. No, no, he didn't say all that. But uh, he's a great guy. Again, a, a lot of fun. Yeah, I hung out so, with Brandon like so much at Gen Con, just like all the time, like, hey man, what are you guys doing? But uh, it was a ton yeah. of fun, like just going around. We got to play Spy Fall. Oh, and he like made that. us buttons. We got buttons at Gen Con. We had our shirts at Gen Con. We had hats. Man, we were like, <laughs> we were flaring out, man. It was awesome. Um, but yeah, another thing that I had tons of fun doing was the uh, secret cabal uh, meetup. Like, it was super crazy was over there. It was a ton of fun. Um, it was like we got there like super early because they were giving away like swag bags and stuff like that. So we wanted to make sure we could get there and get a, a table and everything. And that's when I played a lot of the uh, the code names and stuff like that. Um, but um, when it actually started, there were so many people in there. It was ridiculous. And everybody's having a good time and hooting and hollering. And they did like a raffle. Um, and uh, I guess um, Sam, uh, Brandon's wife, uh, won like the first the first raffle. And uh, you know she uh, she actually like she won another thing. She won another thing. So I'm like, we're going to Vegas right after this because she won like two raffles. <laughs> right. It was like amazing. I'm sure they're probably going to talk about this on their show too. But uh, but uh, someone had brought a game that was like in a burlap sack. And uh, when she was up there, everybody kept chanting burlap sack and uh, trying to get her to grab that game. And so she grabbed it. And the uh, designer of the game was actually there and like took a picture with her and everything. It was like this little funny little game called knock down barns where you're trying to flick and knock down the wooden barns and uh we got the secret cabal guys to actually play the game and it was it was pretty crazy That's awesome. funny. i also got to play uh code names with uh, rodney he only sat down for one game but uh we're sitting there and um and uh pip is like he's not necessarily his, like co-host but he's like a guy that helps him out with a lot of stuff um we're sitting there yeah. we're all playing code names and uh, a guy's like dude if uh if pip guesses just randomly guesses one of the names right now and it's your teams i'll donate 25 dollars to uh to your kickstarter that's on right now and Pip's like okay okay i'll do this and rodney smith of course is just like oh no this is gonna be terrible and i guess he had a one out of 25 chance and he randomly guessed the one that was the assassin that made their team lose so <laughs> of course everybody had a little bit in them at that time so everybody's just going crazy so they're all just laughing ah, and yeah. going crazy um but it was a lot of fun it was totally awesome um the secret cabal guys are great got to talk to jamie and um tony tony's like let's let's do a magic draft next year so that'd be really cool um but all sorts of different stuff those guys are great um but yeah that was another thing that was really amazing so the uh next question is what games did we demo while we were there um, I can start with one that you didn't demo, yes. Rob. 
um, yes. which is uh, the new version of RuneBound. Uh, Fantasy Flight at their in-flight report announced RuneBound. It, I guess, I think it's the third edition now. Um, and they had demos in the booth, so we were just walking by, and there were spaces open at the demos. And I'm like, okay, I'll sit down. I have the uh, the RuneBound second edition, so I was kind of excited to see what's going on. It's a cool little like fantasy game. So um, they've changed like several different things in the game. They've made the movement a little bit, I think, easier to move around. Um, so before in RuneBound, you'd roll these dice, and they had like different terrain symbols. So there was like fields and water and roads and, and maybe not roads, but um, hills and mountains and stuff like that. And you had to get the correct symbol on the dice. You'd roll like six dice or eight dice. I don't remember how many, but you use those to move across the board. Um, if you didn't get the correct symbol, it kind of made it hard for you to get in the place you wanted to. You just have to wait for turns trying to roll the mountains because the last place you need to go to is a mountain. Um, they made it a little bit interesting so that you have actions now. So you can use actions to move, and you it still has very similar dice, but you just get to roll three. So you take one, a, you get three actions a turn. You take one action, you can move. And then if you're on a quest, you can take two actions to actually do the quest, or you can take an action again to move. And it's got all these different skills you can get into the game. Um, you get trophies by completing quests, and you spend those trophies to get skills. So it's a game, it's like a role-playing style game where you're trying to upgrade your character to, to finish off the final mission or whatever, depending on the scenario that you're playing. I think the main one is like a dragon, and uh, halfway through the game, this dragon will appear at this one castle and start moving towards um, the center of the board. And um, if it gets to the center and no one kills it off, then everyone loses the game. If you end up killing off the dragon, then uh, you win the game. And they're going to put like tons of different scenarios, so it's completely different when you play the game but I think the starter set comes with like two the other one's like some undead guy I'm not exactly sure how that works but the um the combat in the game is done with coins so like there's all these like tokens that are like double-sided and they have all sorts of different things on them like uh damage and um defense and like special powers like the lightning bolts are special powers that your character will have and you basically take a handful of these coins and you flip them and they all fall on the table on different sides and it's just very unique and interesting so you have like a whole bunch of like 50 percent chances of different things and there's like a, a certain symbol lets you flip over a coin and another symbol lets you duplicate a coin that's already out there in your coins it's just very interesting and you can get more items to get more of these attack coins and different things like that yeah and each character uses like a different set of coins so it's very different than what the uh, old room bound used to be where you just have like attacks that you have to roll a 10 side die to try to hit so um i i'm interested in the coin thing i'm kind of worried about those coins though because they're just like they're like fantasy flight chits like you would normally have they have like they're pretty thick cardboard but like if you're like rolling these coins all the time and they're just cardboard i feel like after a while they might get worn out and i mean maybe they're maybe that's just the prototype version and they're going to do something more hardcore to make them last longer but uh, i can totally see people making acrylic ones of those or like if those things were metal and you could be like flipping a handful of metal coins like you know how crazy that would be i'm sure somebody will make upgrade components for it but um, but yeah, Runebound, the new Runebound from Fantasy Flight is uh, one of the demos that I did. So Matt, you ready for this? Yeah. Listen, <laughs> we played this game, and I, I kickstarted this game. Now my Kickstarter, it says it's not coming in till like September, um, but they release like a hundred copies a day of it at Gen Con. People were upset about it. I wasn't upset about it because the Kickstarter, you get a lot of Kickstarter exclusives. The game I'm talking about, it's just probably one of the hottest, if not, in my opinion, the hottest game of the con, because everyone was rushing to this, is Blood Rage. This game. Dude, I don't I don't think I don't so... think you said it right. You gotta say Blood Rage. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. This will quickly become one of my favorite games of all time. This game is so stupid ridiculous. This game is so much fun. So, um, everyone gets to be a Viking clan, and everyone gets six cards, and the game has three different ages. All right. And right when the board starts off, it's you're on a very small island, and it's got like nine different spots on the island. You, um, you shuffle all the cards, you put everything together, and then you pull out this one card, and whatever this card is, or whatever island or part of the island that place is, that part of the island is immediately destroyed. So once you start off the game... 
the island is destroyed. And the whole point is Valhalla is happening. Like the old gods Ragnarok are coming back. Ragnarok is happening. Uh, yeah. That's right. Ragnarok is happening. Sorry. Because you go to Valhalla when you die. Ragnarok is happening. And um, you need to get as much glory as possible, whether it's defeating enemies in battle or whether you died a glorious death in battle. And so everyone's going to get six cards. And you do a draft. To start off the game, you do a little draft. And so, like, you pick out cards and you pass them along. You pick out cards, you pass them along until um, until there's actually two cards left. So you're really only going to get four. You get to start off with six cards to look at, but everyone's only going to get four cards. Um, or did you get to keep all six? No, you got to keep five. There was one card you had to put back. Yeah. Listen, so... Everyone gets like rage, and rage lets you know how many turns you can get and how much you can do. And then there's like axes to let you know how many men you can have on the fields. There's horns. There's a bunch of different actions. But um, this is the one that you're talking about the Viking mythology. Like yeah. there's sea monsters and there's trolls and like the um, middle. The middle of the board itself is Yggdrasil, so it is the like life tree or whatever. And like yeah. if, yes. if you pill legit, you get to raise all of your stats. Um, but also, if you pillage it, every single person on the board can come and attack you at the same time, which is epic. <laughs> so when you're doing, yeah, exactly. When you're doing a raid, when you're doing a pillage, if anybody is adjacent to you and there's a spot open to pillage, they could just come in and join the pillage with you. Um, and so well, basically, they attack kind of, you to stop you from pillaging. Well, and they'll get they'll get points for for victory. Uh, they won't get the pillage points, right? Because they just won the battle. But right. uh, Roy decided to, you know what? I'm just going to go in the middle and go for right. it. He took my, his whole my quest. Army. My quest that I had said that I had to have the most strength in uh, on Yggdrasil, which is the very middle of the board. So I thought, as like a long term play, I was just going to move to Yggdrasil and just leave my people there. If I didn't pillage, it would have been fine because like no one else is going to move in there really to go pillage instead of me because I'm just standing there. So because um, if I had a ton of people there, it'd be like, man, he has a ton of people there already. I might as well just leave it. But uh, people are like, it's a demo. And that's also you? the one spot on the board that has no limit to figurines that yeah, can yeah. come in. So, so normally, like, there's limits to how many people can be there. So only, like, one or two people can join the battle, especially if you already have a couple people there. And then they're kind of at a disadvantage. Well, at Yggdrasil, anybody can go in there. So they're like, it's a demo, man. Just go ahead and pillage it. They're like, you get one of each stat. Like, that would be awesome. I'm like, I had really strong cards in my hand. So I'm like, all right, I'll do it. And when I did, I was like, oh, there are going to be a couple people in here to try to kill off some of their own people or, like, contest it or something like that. Um, no, like the guy everybody to my left put brought piles, his entire army. The guy to the right of the boy brought his entire army, and I put in my one little guy because I had this cool little card. It said uh, Loki's deceit, mm -hmm. and any time I lost a battle, um, what I would do is I would steal one rage from the person that won the battle, and the rage is how many turns you can get. And so Roy won the battle, and he had two turns left. But I stole one of his rages, so he went down to one turn, and I went back up to two turns. And so, um, man, this game was so much fun. I also, and I don't see how you guys yeah. didn't get this. That that battle this though, this... that battle though, um, there was piles of people in there, and I ended up winning it. So I was like super pumped because like all the units that were on the board, almost all of them were dead now. And, I'm and like, I don't yes. see how you won because the guy halls of Valhalla are full. <laughs> the guy came in with his leader. And the leaders are worth three points, warriors are worth one point typically, and then monsters are worth whatever they're worth. But I'm surprised the guy with the leader didn't win. But the card you played was like plus eight or it, it was, was some plus high number. five. No. Yes. So you had <laughs> I, someone one, passed two, three, that card to me too. Five. It's like I was doing the draft. That's not the card that I started with. Someone passed that card to me on the draft. And I'm like, I'll My, take plus the five. The best two cards I got, the best two cards I got were um, passed to me as well. Loki's Revenge. And then the one card that I got where any time a, a warrior exits Valhalla, you got a victory point for it. And so everybody's armies are pretty much dead at the end of the game, and you mm -hmm. put them in Valhalla. Well, I had this card that says all my guys in Valhalla, I get a point for them. So at the end of the round, I got an additional six points. So yeah, it made it, it so yeah. it's like, hey, go kill your guys on purpose so they can, yeah. they can get to the halls of Valhalla and have a glorious death. It kind of kind of awesome. It was amazing. I was excited. I'm Absolutely. looking at all the the miniatures. Yeah, and, so and, and like the miniature board. wise, they the look detail awesome. on this it's, game. It's unbelievable. They the are detail. insane. Like 
like the, I was the bear clan, and uh, my guys were wearing like these, you know, like big uh, cloaks. It just made of bear skin, and yeah, like not that you felt every fiber, but like the detail on just the fur on the back of my guys' coats was absolutely amazing. Cool mini or not, I tell you what, and I know we're gonna get into the in-flight report, but I am quickly falling in love with Cool Mini or Not and some of the games that they have and games that they have um, coming out in the future um, in the detail of the game. Like, Blood Rage was so much fun. It was a blast. I absolutely loved it. I cannot wait for it to come in. I also got the expansion where you can add another player because it starts off only playing four. Um, and those but, monsters, uh, just the man. Detail. The monsters are the crazy part about yes. it. Yes. Like, yeah. you had the Bro, troll, troll or whatever. The troll says, whenever the troll enters an area, kill all, um, kill all opposing warriors. <laughs> so they could they could have like a ton of people there. They could just be like, you just and go he goes one there and he eats everybody. I mean, it's literally what happens. He eats everybody. There's no contesting it. There's no card you can play to stop it. He just walks in and eats everybody. And then I had so- I had in my hand the the monster card to play like the sea serpent, which could like basically fight in two different areas at the same time because he's in the water. So a hey, so. I, I would I wish I had enough um like rage points to actually play him, but I was doing other strategies. But uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a absolutely a lot of fun. And I know I already talked about Forbidden Stars. So cool. Um, so I guess we can talk about um we me and Rob both went to the in flight report, um, which is Fantasy Flight's basically keynote where they talk about like their new and upcoming games. Um, one of the things they did first was talk about the history of Fantasy Flight, which was really cool. Starting that was off from, really cool. I did not know that. Yeah, back in the day, they started off as a comic book company, and then uh, um, a French comic book company, not just normal comic books. They sold French European, comics in yeah, the United States, European comics to the United States, and then uh, Christian decided they were going to put out this Twilight Imperium game, and it Good just shot. sold like yeah. sold like gangbusters. Um, <laughs> So and then the rest, they had like a grid, and it was just showing up and up and up as they got the Star Wars license and the Lord of the Rings license and all these other things, and making these ridiculously amazing epic thematic games. And it just one of the things that made me really happy is like everybody knows that Fantasy Flight's like my favorite company, and I'm sort of a fanboy of them or whatever. But um, just the fact that they're like epic games are like what we're about like we're about making these huge big box games and that's why when they talked about putting out forbidden stars or like this is back to our roots like we want to make these huge games i'm like keep doing it i love it <laughs> oh yeah so um but a few of the things they talked about was they did announce the uh, room bound the uh, new version of it so um that's supposed to be coming out i think they said like the end of the year so that's pretty exciting yep. um and then we also announced the reprint of the Fury of Dracula, yeah. uh, which is supposed to come back, uh, come out in the fall, and um, they kind of tweaked it a little bit, and so they're pretty excited about the new additions and and the um, combat mechanics that they changed in the game. And then there was another game that they announced. Do you remember what it is? I know what it was. The actual game. Yeah. They the announced Warhammer, Warhammer Quest. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it is a. Um, Co- like Warhammer Quest used to be like this cooperative game like back in the day um, with like moving people around on the board and stuff like that and they have several games that are like that already but uh, this is going to be Warhammer Quest the adventure card game so this is going to be a cooperative card game that you um, play together um, I guess sort of similar to like the Lord of the Rings LCG but probably like a little bit more involved because it's self-contained as much as self-contained things are for uh, Fantasy Flight. I'm sure there's going to be tons of stuff coming out for it. Um, I didn't get a chance to demo that one but I wish that I would have because it, it looked pretty cool and I love cooperative games. Now one other thing they also announced there was um, um, Star Wars uh, role-playing games. Uh, they announced the and there was actually for sale there, uh, Force and Destiny, where you now can do a role-playing game um, as a Jedi or a Sith. Um, and so that was pretty exciting. I actually picked up a copy of that. I'm sure now that's the one everybody D&D. was waiting for. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah I need to be a Jedi. Because like, if you want to yeah. play a Star Wars role-playing game, what's the first thing you want to be? I know me. I'm like, I just want to be Luke Skywalker. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. I guess so. me and all the other people are like, Mandalorian! Yes! <laughs> Well, the first one they come at came out with was like, like the scum and villainy one, which was all like the bounty yep. hunters and like the uh, yeah. the like space smugglers and all that. And then the next one they came out, which was like the uh, 
the rebel one. It was Age of the Empire. Age of the Empire. So it, it, it had to do with the whole entire war and everything that's going yeah, on. Yeah, so you that. had like lots of stuff. You want to be like a rebel pilot or that, that sort of archetype character. And then now that they're coming out with the... Um, Force the, uh, and Destiny. Jedi stuff. It's like, yes. <laughs> so that'd be awesome. Nice. Still in shrink. But yeah, I've never actually played well, any of those games. I've been games, so busy since cool. I've been back. <laughs> I'm still wearing my tie. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, man. Um, they also talked to about, um, you probably are more excited about this than me since you own the game, but um, Imperial Assault Return to Hoth. Yes, so, I am actually really excited about that. So they and had like, I'm, all sorts of awesome I'm excited for the expansions to come out with that. Yeah, um, I took a bunch of pictures up on the Instagram of like the uh, the minis and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like Fantasy Flight, like has some amazing miniatures in their stuff, and just the fact that it's like the th- thematic guys and stuff, it's it's crazy. Um, now the Return to Hoth, it's actually its own uh, standalone playable game. Really, you can play it. Yeah, like you don't need uh, you don't need Imperial Assault to play it. Are you sure about that? Yeah, they announced that. They announced it. It's its own stand standalone campaign. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing that we wanted to talk about was uh, for Eldritch Horror, they are releasing another big box expansion under the pyramids. So it's going to have a lot more of the uh, expedition type stuff um, with new, new, more of everything that's already in the game. But uh, mostly just like all the stuff for that game, they've made it so it's modular now. So you can just take stuff out put stuff back in so i you'll be glad to know matt that i went through and took out all of the um all of the stuff (laughs) from the mountains of madness um because you know how like we were we were playing and it was just like snow and frostbite and all this crazy stuff it was all the mountains of madness stuff and there were so many like i was looking online and people were like hey mountains of madness just really ramps up the difficulty of the game and and then I was like relooking at all the stuff, and they're like, you know, these are supposed to be modules, right? You're supposed to like take these out and put these back in. <laughs> I'm like, I probably shouldn't just leave that in, especially when I'm teaching new players. So that, I've a, uh, I've that lingering sickness. That was the thing. Yeah, man, I love that game. Um, but uh, that game we played was brutal. <laughs> yeah. Which, speaking of that universe, I did ask uh, Mr. Mr. Peterson, um, at the end of the in-flight report, because I absolutely love um. Mansions of Madness. It's probably one of my favorite. And he says, like, role-playing game. I call it more of an RPG, but I... Uh, no. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. I say I call it more of a co-op game because it's, you know, everyone else is working together and one guy... Is, I, was, uh, is I would say but that, I, that's exactly what a role-playing game is, though. Right? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I know, but anyway. Anyway, um, I was asking, I was like, hey, I know you really can't tell me this, but has Eldritch Horror just kind of taken over that whole universe... Can I expect anything at all um, from Mansions of Madness? And he was like, you know, I'm really not going to be disappointed. There's some cool things that they've got coming out for it that are really going to um, uh, make it relevant again. So I'm I'm pumped because I I have like every, I have every single big expansion that's come out for it, and I have like two of the small ones. There's there's only a couple of the small ones I don't have, and they're really just like single missions. I love that game. You haven't gotten to play Mansions of Madness yet, Matt? Have you? We're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to get that to the table. That's seriously, it's gonna be like one of those things where it's like, "What are you doing this weekend?" Oh, we're just playing all the games. Yeah, all yeah. Games. Like, there's just so many things that need to be played. I know. So, Roy, it's... let me ask you this: What did you think of the in-flight report? I mean, I thought it was about uh, as a whole. I mean, of course, I was like, "Man, I really wish they'd announce something for Twilight Imperium or something crazy like that." But I thought it was about normal. I mean, they announced some new games that look pretty cool um i like last year i did the same thing i was like oh that that's cool i probably probably won't be getting like all that no i bought like almost all the stuff they announced because i'm super frugal so like when i see the new stuff i'm like oh that's the new stuff oh okay and then i look at it and learn more about it and read about it and i'm like i need that like that's what happened with Bad Lore. I'm like, Bad Lore, look at all those minis. Like that game's expensive. I'm never gonna get into that. Now it's like one of my favorite games. So yeah. And now they got me hooked, man. They just sink those hooks into you and just don't let you go. So yeah. But yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, but I mean, I was hoping they would announce something that I would immediately want to buy right then, which wasn't exactly the case. Can't. 
I can can I be honest? Can am I gonna Just get as long as you're not too mean? <laughs> okay. I think I don't know. Like I guess I was spoiled a lot by last year's in flight report because last year they Fantasy Flight did a better job, I think, last year than they did this year of keeping things a secret and also releasing games. Um, and here's what I mean. Like, people predicted last year about Imperial Assault, but nobody really knew about Imperial Assault. And people also predicted um, Star Wars Armada, but no one really knew about it. And so when it was announced last year, like, people blew their minds. Like, it was yeah. absolutely ridiculous. And the things this year that they announced and stuff were great, but, um, like, Forbidden Stars would have been an amazing announcement. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, like a month and if, a half. They, if they announced if Forbidden they Stars, waited. like, there, and then they're like, and it's here at the con with us, I probably yeah, would have blown sale. my mind and probably, yeah. like, had to, like, figure out a way and to buy so, them, like, but I feel like this year, I really like the history of uh, Fantasy Flight and, and some of the things that they're doing. Like, I mean, it was a great in-flight report, but... Um, like Fury of Dracula, we knew about Fury of Dracula before they announced it. It seems like I don't know somebody may have tweeted one or too many pictures before the con. Well, like some saying? of their surprises well, weren't really surprises. They actually announced year. Fury of Dracula um, on Monday, like the Monday before. Yeah, the con, and so, so it wasn't. It wasn't. I don't know. It just. It was fun. I was with you being their twentieth anniversary. I was thinking, okay, this is where we're going to get Twilight Imperium. However, I still do believe, because they did announce at the very end, that they are doing Star Wars A New Hope game. They can't say anything else about it. It's just Star Wars A New Hope with the fantasy flight symbol right underneath it. Because it's so tight, because of the movie and everything, I would it would blow my mind again if, uh, if they did do like a TI or Twilight Imperium edition with the Star Wars stuff, like that I'm, would be so ridiculous and epic. I'm I know still you're on not the opposite that, side of that. that but idea. oh my goodness, that would be so amazing to play a game where you know it's you just uh, I, yeah. Do you, that's do all you I'm think say. that like awesome. Christian Peterson, like, because you realize like that's the game that like started their company? Do you think he would actually yeah. like let go of his own IP to like do it to like Star Wars? I mean, I would I be stoked if he would if let he didn't. go of it. I think if I don't think he'll let go. I think there'll always be Ti or Twilight Imperium stuff. It would be but cool if they made making, another epic style like big game with like the new. They're stuff. making so much money off of Star Wars. I mean, it's it's funny when you watch the charts of like Fantasy Flight, you know, Fantasy acquired Flight, Star Fantasy Wars, Flight, and then uh, X Wing. Whoop! It's, it just like went through the roof once they got X Wing and they started selling it. Um, things have gone through the roof, and it's it's been their number one sellers. Like um, Imperial Assault, biggest launch ever of Fantasy Flight, and then they did Star Wars Armada, which capsized that, and that became their biggest launch ever. Um, so I, I don't think it's a bad thing if they did a Twilight Imperium with like a Star Wars theme on it. You still keep your Twilight Imperium, but you have the big diplomatic because that's Star Wars. You have the Senate. Right? Yeah, yeah. You have all these different galaxies. You have everyone coming together. So Not everyone good. is with the Empire. Not everyone's with the Rebellion. Like, that'd be so cool. So here's the thing. Do they have the rights to, like, the Star Wars stuff that BioWare did with the Old Republic that was set way before any of the I'm not sure exactly what the, the, the licenses that they have. I know that they've made some, like, ships from the Extended Universe into X-Wing. So yes. I don't know if they have, like, some of the old video game type stuff I that to me would be more interesting like that type of a game in that setting because that setting is vastly different from all the stuff you see in like the new Star the Wars stuff where it's like decay and empire rise and fall of stuff like the old republic's just like everything's crazy yes and it's just <laughs> it was like, a good game I mean they really were I actually yeah. like Knights of the Old Republic 2, 2 a little bit better than the first one but um, they could totally do that I yeah. mean they I mean, have the rights to the Star Wars franchise. They I, actually, I think, I think with it, George Lucas or Lucas Arts, created a ship for X Wing. Like they co-designed a ship out of the Star Wars universe that never existed before. Um, I think it's like the Imperial Raider is the one that they were talking about that they announced. Like 
if you're going big enough where you can make new ships that never existed before, you can kind of do whatever you want. I, I mean, think that's also, I like, they technically don't own the right to make Star Wars board games. They own the right to make Star Wars miniatures game. So Imperial Assault is a Star Wars miniatures game. Like, they have to, like, brand it super hard as a Star Wars miniatures game because, like, that's the rights that they own. They own the rights to, like, X-Wing miniatures game, Armada miniatures game, and then that. So if, like, they went to a Twilight And then RPG stuff. Yeah. Right, and then RPG stuff. So I think, like, Hasbro has the rights to make Twilight or Star Wars board games. So, I mean... I was about to ask you, you said Hasbro still? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, and can you imagine, like, they're making, like, Angry Birds. And, like, Twilight, or uh, Fantasy Flight is making, like, these <laughs> epic games. So, it's like, I don't know. If they'd have, probably have... Whatever they make, they're probably have going to have to brand it as a miniatures-style game. Unless they can get a license away from Hasbro, which sounds like the worst nightmare ever. <laughs> I don't know, but now that they're with Asthma Day, so much more money has just been... Um, brought to that company yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. i know asthma day is european but there are a lot of crazy european people that are fans of star wars i mean they have there's like a religion over there on the whole star wars thing they go I, crazy for i remember stuff. i remember when uh when they first announced um imperial assault and uh someone was like someone one of the questions immediately after was like hey i thought you didn't have the license to make star wars board games and uh christian pierce was like shh, shh, shh. <laughs> like like it's it's okay it is a miniatures game <laughs> so yes because i mean they have the the tactical like one-on-one battles that are i mean technically just happen to be on boards but but you know it's 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 yeah. technically a miniatures game so well i guess they get away with that because of the little tiles yeah you know they put the tiles together which you do the same thing with ti3 i mean right. you have little tiles it's not like a big board it's not like a big board so I don't know, maybe. But but if they did, the miniatures would have to be amazing because it's a miniatures but game. <laughs> I still love Fantasy Flight. Most of my games are Fantasy Flight. So I mean I'm still I'm still a big fan, just spoiled a little bit by last year compared to this year. That was it. Do you have any thoughts, Matt, about Gen Con as a whole? Yeah. Would you go next year? Maybe. Depends. Well, Let me ask you this. Well, Money next inside, year when we're huge and like like people are paying us to go, you know, we're just going to have that <laughs> press pass and like being able to get in for free uh, and everything. <laughs> the um I mean it, it seems interesting like I I have a small aversion to like large scale con events just because I'm not that keen like, on I just, hundreds of people. Yeah. Thousands of people. <laughs> And it's like I get there and then I feel like I need to be there and doing things like the whole time. And if I'm not, I'm like, oh, no, I'm wasting time. Well, and, well we went back to the um, hotel and took a nap <laughs> and then played some board games afterwards. Like, but, then we, but then we stayed up till 2 a.m. playing uh, <laughs> the new Secret Wars, which was absolutely amazing. And then Spectre Ops, where my friend cheated. I love him, but he cheated. <laughs> I hope Steven listens to the podcast now so he can hear you talk yeah. about how he cheated. I mean, he didn't cheat. But he didn't play the right way, because we would have won if he played the right way. But I don't anyway. know. I don't know about all that. He was doing. He was beasting it. So, no, we were on top of anyway. Anyway, so Matt, <laughs> would you go next year? Uh, yeah. I mean, probably. Probably. Bro, so many people are gonna want to stroke that beard, man. They're gonna be like, "Where's your meetup? I want to touch Pikachu's beard." Man, this is gonna be weird. My beard's wiry and awful. <laughs> You mean wiry and amazing? No, I'm um, but yeah, next year, like one of the things I really wish we had done this year. I guess I didn't think like, oh, we're just starting off. We're just a small podcast. I didn't think of like actually like doing like a meetup because I was like, maybe a random person will say hey to us. But there are a bunch of people on Instagram like hitting us up all the time, like, hey, where are you guys at? Like, like hmm. trying to get together. And I mean, I was trying to like figure out ways to like talk to them. But it'd be cool if I just said, hey, this time, this day come say hey we got buttons like it would just be it would just be cool to be able to actually like meet up with people and then, like if a couple people showed up that would be awesome um i told rob that's what we're gonna have to do next year but uh rob's like it's gonna be so huge like we might have to actually like get a place but it is. we're definitely gonna we're definitely gonna like have more plans for gen con um 
it's really easy to like go up and talk to the publishers because they're stuck in one place so they're they're easy to find but like a person (laughs) like i had so much trouble just keeping up with my friends like I would like look over and be like, that thing looks really cool. And I'd turn around and they'd be gone. And I'd just be like, <laughs> we just constantly texting, where are you at? And we'd have to stand in a place for a second until they found us just because you just get yeah. swept away by the crowd. And I mean, some of the most, like some of the most fun I had in the exhibition hall was just like walking around by myself. Cause like then I didn't have to worry about whatever I could stop. And I was trying to take tons of pictures for the Instagram. Like, um, I don't know if you've looked at our Instagram map, but it's just like slap full of Gen Con pictures and like. Oh my goodness! Like over the and f- the first day, over a thousand plus likes. Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> we got like tons and tons and tons of people like just being like, oh my gosh, and it was cool to be like one of the first people, like tweeting out and like Instagramming the stuff. So it was a lot of fun. Which we love you guys for that. We really do appreciate that. Like we really do love you guys for that. And please keep doing that. Yeah, when- and don't be afraid to ask us where we are. We would have totally met up with you guys. I think we did, but it's like they're asking us where we are, and like then I said, "Hey, like this is what we're trying to do," and then people would look at their phone like an hour later because I'm like, "You're in a huge yeah. convention hall, like you're not looking at your phone like every two seconds. There's so much to look at. It's ridiculous." Um, I know you tried to do a spontaneous like spyfall meetup real quick. Remember when you were waiting in the yeah, dice yeah, tower yeah. and you were like over a hall, Jay? Um, I know that was real quick, but um, seriously, to all the fans. Uh, it's kind of cool saying that, but to everybody that listens, you know, um, yeah, we would love to meet up with you guys. But yeah, Matt, maybe this next is real, year. Matt. Um, this is real, nah. Matt. You wasn't, don't even realize. Wasn't there? It didn't know. happen. <laughs> Bro, this is real. Like it's so ridiculously cool, but it's like this is real. Like, but yeah, and and we're always like there to definitely like answer questions and stuff like that on the Instagram or anything. Like I have tons of people ask me like just board game questions constantly, uh-huh. and that's awesome. Like somebody actually cares enough to ask me what I think about a game. I mean, like yeah, I played it, but it's cool that they're like, it's it's fun. So uh, make sure to continue to hit us up on all the social media stuff. Um, AJ wants to know about the new cash and guns, Rob. Um, I'm not gonna play with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> Uh, no, it's not terrible. Um, it it yes. um it did come with like a bunch of new weapons. It comes with like a little a little um. Well, we talked like, about it shot. before. Yeah, but um, I haven't I haven't been able to. Is it still in shrink too? It's not still in shrink. Um, I'm actually really excited for this big gun right here because if you shoot somebody with the really big gun and they haven't been wounded before and they don't duck like you actually shoot them it does two damage not one damage <laughs> um now if they have been wounded it only does one damage because three damage kills you but so question if you what if wounded, what if two people are big daddy if two people are pointed at them and they have the big daddy gun and no. um and one and both of them are hitting can the big daddy do two and then the other one do yes. one and kill them in one hit? Yeah, it actually says that in the rules. The big daddy will kill you. Holy smokes. Yeah, so if – and the only thing about the two damage is you can't have any damage before that. So in that exact scenario, somebody's shooting at you and someone big daddy and you're dumb enough to stay in the game, uh, you die. So Dude, you got big you, you holding up the gun just lady. just just really makes me like wish that we had enough Dude, people like on the, the podcast to just play. The little one. <laughs> the little bitty derringer right. is awesome. Yeah, it's just a hat poo. <laughs> yeah. So, do you get those like from character cards or for like cards that go into play? Or uh, it seems from what I've read so far that they actually come from powers. Like um, you get okay, different gotcha. char- you get different cards, and the cards say, "Oh, if you were able to get this, you can get the big daddy gun." And um, it just it looks really cool. I'm really excited to play. My family we really like cash and guns, and then I know our play group really likes cash and guns. And um, it's just it's just a lot of fun. It's, a- AJ it's says be AJ says you better call him that McDouble favor because you're getting shot, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> We're just sitting there playing cash and guns. AJ's just like deadlocked on you, and you're like, hey man, I'll buy you a cake. <laughs> exactly. That's you got. That's you how you get to shoot. AJ's heart. Is the cake. And then AJ's like, done, done. We'll find somebody else now. I'll shoot somebody else. <laughs> who, will, who else wants to I give me a cake? Will buy AJ a cake. I like playing the game. My problem is I'm a lot like Roy. Is I'm I'm also a talker, and so people and are like, Hold on, you're, you're you're making a noise. I need to shoot you now. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's why Phil dominates that game. Is because Phil never talks, and then Phil just accumulates all the things, and then you're just like, 
No, guys, Phil has like everything. <laughs> yes. And but, oh, but in this one, late. in this one, they have counterfeit stuff. Oh. So they have like a painting, and it's like all scratched up and ugly and, and messy, and it, it only gets you like ten dollars or something like that. And so they have like a bunch of junk stuff, and they also have like a bunch of fake diamonds in there, and it's mixed in with like bowling balls and other stuff. And so it counts towards your diamond total. You know, whoever has the most diamonds gets that sixty thousand dollar diamond at yeah. the end. But, but doesn't give you like any it's worth money. Like, it's worth like, like five bucks. bucks. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> nice. it's worth nothing. Where everything else is worth like hundreds and thousands. This is like eh, five dollars. You know, gumball machine. You know, lollipop ring. <laughs> nice. So it, it's, somebody's it's like cool. passing ring pops off his diamonds. They're like, guys, check it out though. Yeah. Oh hey, did you guys know that I was a fan of this? <laughs> Rob is holding so, up uh, Risk Game of Thrones edition. So, real quick, um, I know we're running out of time. Everybody was, like, running on the first day to wherever they wanted to go. And sadly, I knew I didn't have to run to this booth <laughs> to get my copy. So, I ran, and Roy and I, uh, he was a great friend. He beat me in line for the Predator. And so, I got Legendary Predator. Um, and then, I calmly, quietly walked over to USopoly. And there was a giant stack of Game of Thrones Risk. And... Um, I got my copy, and I am so excited. I am so excited. Bro, this is like, it's it's actually really heavy. There's a lot of pieces that come in this game. It is not a light little board game. I'm excited for a different reason. Why? Just another upset in the international. One of the teams that I thought was going to be like a top six team just got knocked out by uh, the Korean team. <laughs> oh, that was yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, so I'm just like, Ooh. Yeah, they were playing Game of Thrones <laughs> Risk, and that, yeah. that Korean team just lost. Totally, it's so man. crazy. It blows awesome. my mind. So yeah, nice. um, Roy. I know you already kind of said it, but you're gonna go next year, right? I want to. I'm like it costs a lot of money to go to Gen Con, so hopefully I can figure out a way to uh, subsidize that if I have to like help someone out at a booth or do whatever. But um, yeah, man, I totally. Plaid Hat does do that. Tax um, write-offs. Hat. Yeah, pretty much Plaid everybody. Pretty much any booth that you're gonna help out at, like they'll they'll help you in some way. So you just gotta it's put totally in the time. And yeah. I mean, if someone wants to like let me go to Gen Con easier for me playing games all day, that sounds pretty awesome to me. So, yeah. Especially because most of the exciting part is like hanging out with people like after the halls closed and stuff like that. So, you're not going to be working when the halls closed. So that sounds awesome to me. Well, cool beans. Anything else? Do we want to go over this question? Um, um, I think it's a resounding yes, everyone, if we can. I know I'm going to try to make it an annual trip every year for Gen Con. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, it, I'm sure it'll just be uh, bigger and better. So. Yeah. Okay, dope, guys. Well, I guess we're just going to go ahead and close the podcast out for the day. Um, so, guys, make sure to check us out on our live streams. We stream every tuesday night the podcast at 9 p.m eastern standard time and we play games on friday we're gonna please be playing some awesome games um this weekend since we got a bunch of new ones and uh yeah i, I wish i could play flick them up that would be awesome um but uh <laughs> but make sure to check that out that's on fridays from 6 p.m to 10 p.m eastern standard time and uh the uh, address for that is www.twitch.tv forward slash epic gaming night Make sure to check us out on Twitter and Instagram at Epic Gaming Night. We're over there answering questions and posting tons of pictures of board games all the time if you like that sort of thing. Make sure to uh, follow, like, subscribe, hit us up on YouTube. Um, Just search Epic Gaming Night there and uh, review us on iTunes and uh, Facebook. You know, there's social media. There's lots of it. So just hit us up on all of it. Um, But, yeah, guys, thanks thanks for coming out. One last thing, I beat Roy at Redemption. I did. I did. Yeah, he did. played Redemption, and I beat him. <laughs> Bye, everybody. But I won. <laughs> oh, my goodness. See you guys later. What a closer. See you guys. All right. So, did I tell you I got a speeding ticket on my way home? What? Oh, no. Peace. Not even-